What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to College Football Talk with Peter Burtnett. In today's episode, we're going to be breaking down the Alabama Crimson Tide and the Ohio State Buckeyes and talking about how those teams actually share a couple of similarities that I'll go over further in this episode. But if you go on to enjoy this video, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, turn on those post notifications if you want to see more from College Football Talk. But without further ado, let's dive into the video. The most electrifying environments. Passionate fan bases. The traditions we hold dear. The tailgates we wake up early for. The memories we make. The rivals we hate. We try to forget. This is college football. So Alabama and Ohio State, again, said said briefly there in the intro that both of these teams actually kind of have a couple of similarities. And I think the big one that probably most people gravitate towards, I mean, there's really a few and it kind of depends on what, what you're looking at, what you're thinking about. But I think the first one that comes to mind for me is the fact that both of these teams who ran their conferences really for the good part of a decade have been kind of overtaken and not even kind of really have been overtaken Alabama by the by the Georgia Bulldogs at the top of the SEC and the top of the college football world and then Ohio State by Michigan in the last couple of years. Ohio State and Alabama, they both were the premier powers in the Big 10 and the SEC for again like a decade. Pretty much pretty much the entirety of the 2010s, I would say. Both Alabama and Ohio State ran college football. Clemson, Clemson kind of out of the SEC, ACC did a little bit as well during that run. And obviously, Florida State had one championship out of the ACC as well. But if you look at it from from a big picture, from really 2009 through like 2020, I would say, both Ohio State and Alabama were kings of college football. And Ohio State, more so the Big Ten. Obviously, they got the one national championship. Not so much in college football just because of Alabama's presence, but both of those teams, and they kind of, kind of brought that era to an end, interestingly enough, in the 2020 national championship game when Alabama just kind of ran really rolled over Ohio state in the championship game that was played in front of obviously restricted crowds and everything. And what was a really weird 2020 season because of, because of the pandemic, it really is interesting to look at where those teams were and where they are now. And it's not like they've had a massive drop off. It's, it's not like they've lost any of their recruiting pull or lost the ability of the the players that they have. And if anything, at the quarterback position especially and wide receiver, I would say both of these teams still are probably the best in college football, especially at wide receiver. It's it's hard at this current stage to look at any other schools and put them ahead of Alabama or Ohio State. I mean, there's there's so many receivers that you could go over from from both colleges, you know, from Alabama, you've got a Jerry Judy, you've got a um, John Mechie, you've got you even got one that both teams have shared, Jamison Williams. And then you look at Ohio State, you've got Chris Olave, Garrett Wilson. I mean, and those are just a couple of the names that that both of those teams have produced at the wide receiver position. And then in recent years, quarterback as well, you've got, you know, especially in terms of NFL ready quarterbacks, Dwayne Haskins, obviously rest in peace to, to that young man who who had so much talent and potential and gone way too soon. Justin Fields and then most recently CJ Stroud. Those guys are NFL ready quarterbacks and obviously it's yet to be seen what Fields and um, Stroud are able to do at the NFL level. Fields has, has shown flashes of potential for the Bears. He'll need some some more help there for sure in in Chicago 
and then then you got Alabama obviously most most recently Bryce Young and I think he probably stands out but even you know even Tua Tagovailoa and Jalen Hurts even if even though he transferred away to Oklahoma for a season still had a really good career at Alabama so I think that brings up though another similarity that these two teams share and that is a question at the quarterback position it's obviously you know I I don't think there's any argument that can be made that it's not the most important position in in football is is the quarterback position it's who everybody looks to he leads the team and especially the offense and both of both Alabama and Ohio State have to replace really you know generational quarterbacks really Ohio State CJ Stroud put up incredible numbers last year in you know a just season that was deserving of being among among the best quarterbacks in the nation he threw for 4435 yards 44 touchdowns and six interceptions so a big season for Stroud obviously had some big big play wide receivers and the good thing for whoever comes in and wins this quarterback battle and right now it's looking like maybe favoring Kyle McCord. He obviously has a connection with who I would say is the best wide receiver, almost undoubtedly, in college football, Marvin Harrison Jr., having played with him in high school. But Devin Brown is de- definitely a player to keep an eye on as well. I would expect with the the first game just really cu- two and a half weeks away, first game for the Buckeyes, Kyle McCord to, to take the majority of those snaps in that first game I don't. I don't see Ryan Day being the type of coach to split snaps at all. I think if anything, you know, they're going to battle it out in in fall camp, and whoever wins will be the one who starts that game. And maybe if it, you know, if it's a if it's a blowout against Indiana, or maybe the next week against Youngstown State, kind of getting in for kind of the backup time if if the game is well in hand. But that that's the question for Ohio State and Alabama. It's it's the same sort of thing. You've got. A, a huge quarterback to replace in Bryce Young, number one overall pick for the, by the Carolina Panthers. And he threw, his was more, I would say Bryce Young was a little bit more of a leader. He didn't put up the massive numbers that, that Stroud has. He threw for just over 3,300 yards, 32 touchdowns, five interceptions, but just highly efficient in the pocket and really a, a pro-ready quarterback. And again, same, same sort of situation at Alabama. You've got Jalen Milrow, who's a little bit more, of, of a dual threat running quarterback. And then you've got Ty Simpson, who is, I think, a former five-star prospect who really is the prototypical pocket passer. And then you've also got the Notre Dame trans- transfer, Tyler uh, Buckner, or Buchner. And so they've, they've got a battle going on there at Alabama. I don't know if theirs is as clear as to who is who is emerging in, in the front of theirs, but definitely the Crimson Tide. But again, both of these teams have kind of questions at the quarterback position. But at the same time, both teams also have a really good selection of wide receivers to kind of help ease whoever gets into that starting position. Ja'Cory Brooks, Jermaine Burton at Alabama, and obviously at Ohio State, you've got Marvin Harrison Jr., Julian Fleming, Emeka Abuka, and even Cade Stover at tight end. But the challenge for these quarterbacks, and it kind of ties in nicely, um, is the offensive line and the questions that are there kind of for both teams, I think, especially it's been talked about more with Ohio State, the questions at offensive line, having a couple of, I think, you know, top top picks in terms of their position tackles, uh, Paris Johnson and Dewan Jones and losing, you know, only returning two starters on the offensive line is definitely definitely a challenge. I think, especially with the the experience of the guys who are potentially likely to start the center Carson Hins- Hinsman uh, is kind of the projected starter, at least from from this magazine that I'm looking at. Uh, Shabala, I hope I'm saying that right, at right tackle. Both of them are, are freshmen. And I think the offensive line continues to be a strong suit of Ohio State football. But it is, it is certainly a question that will need to be answered kind of early on. I think at Indiana, it's not a really difficult test, but it's a little bit – it's one of those where you kind of maybe expect it to – Maybe be a little bit tight, certainly for the first quarter, maybe the first half. Um, but then you'd expect the Buckeyes talent to pull away. And then at Alabama, they've also just got two two starters returning, Seth McLaughlin and J.C. Latham at center and right tackle, a senior and a junior. And then they've also got a couple of young guys that are projected to start, Caden Proctor at left tackle, freshman, and then Tyler Booker at right guard is a sophomore. And so both of these teams, those will be questions that will have to be answered. And I think 
Alabama, they ease into it a little bit with Middle Tennessee, but then they have Texas. And that, that I think that'll be the true test for, for Alabama's offensive line is against Texas because the Longhorns had the best quarterback pressures or the most quarterback pressures last year in college football. Talked about them in another video about how finishing is going to be key for the Longhorns, but they still often got back to the quarterback and created problems. And I think they they even did that a few times for Bryce Young when they played last year in Austin. And so whoever whoever starts a quarterback for for both of these teams will have to, you know, get accustomed to maybe a little bit of, you know, maybe having to rush a couple throws here and there as the offensive line starts to get settled in. Both of these teams, though, the players that they bring in are always top caliber players. That doesn't mean, of course, that that every single one is going to deliver to those expectations. But I think both of these teams, the questions of the offensive line will be answered, I believe, fairly early on. And both of these teams offensively will be among the best in the nation once again. And then shifting over to defense, both of these teams, I think defensively, have maybe taken a slight step back from the level that they played at when they were, again, dominating in both teams, you know, aside from aside from against Michigan for for Ohio State and against Georgia for Alabama have really dominated most teams that they face. Of course, Alabama had a couple of close wins last year and the close losses to Tennessee and LSU, both on the last play of the game and defensively kind of struggled in both of those losses. Ohio State, obviously, when they're going up against Michigan, cannot seem to stop the run. So those will be those will be questions to be answered for both of these teams defensively. If I had to pick out one player for both team teams, I think the easy one, the the kind of main guy, cornerback Kool Aid McKinstry, is the one that most people have an eye on. I think outside linebacker edge rusher Dallas Turner is also a guy who maybe is a little bit more I wouldn't say under the radar per se, but certainly maybe doesn't get as much attention as he deserves, and I think he is primed for a breakout season. So keep an eye out for Dallas Turner and then Ohio state defensively, you know, the, the emerging star is uh, JT Tui Maloa. And he, he had a big game, especially against Penn state. I remember last year, but he's the main guy to watch on the Ohio state defense. And then I think another guy is linebacker, Tommy Eichenberg kind of paired with steel chambers. Both of those guys in, in the middle of the Buckeyes defense, Tommy Eichenberg is a true, true leader. He's, um, I would say kind of a little bit of a classic, you know, silver bullet Ohio State linebacker kind of bringing back shades of, of a James Oronitis. But both both of these teams have have strong defenses. They've maybe taken a slight step back, but they they both have the tools and the the recruits coming in and they both have a solid amount of starters returning i didn't obviously go over all of all of the de- all the players for both of these defenses this season alabama and georgia or alabama and ohio state both face an uphill climb georgia and michigan still appear poised to remain at the top of the conferences Alabama would not face Georgia potentially until an SEC championship game. Obviously, Ohio State will finish the regular season in Ann Arbor against the Wolverines. But let me know your thoughts on whether you think Ohio State and Alabama can overcome the the recent, I guess, defeats to two teams that have almost kind of surpassed them in in wins on the field and in terms of getting to to the college football playoff. Obviously, Alabama's only played Georgia once during that time, but they, you know, have have struggled to to get to the to the mountaintop where they were to the pinnacle of college football. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. What you think Alabama and Ohio State will achieve this season? Whether they'll be able to get over the Michigan and Georgia humps that have kind of gotten in the way. But if you've enjoyed this video, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more like this. And that's all for now. Peter Burnett, signing out. Peace.